All right, what's going on everybody? Physio Trader here. Uh, hopefully I can get a couple more videos out before the next couple of weeks where I'll be gone, but uh, let's set us up for a watch list going into next week. Do remember next week is a shortened week. We do have Monday off in observation of Labor Day. The markets will be closed. I anticipate the markets will probably start a little bit warm on Tuesday going into just having a nice extended week. People are happy, going lucky. Unless of course any catastrophic news happens, but going into that, it'll really be a, a kind of difference in of an opinion, and I'll get to mine later today, about where I think the markets are gonna be headed because at this point, um, things have gotten a little bit interesting, to say the least. So far, um, you know, the markets to me seem a little bit over the top, they look a little bit overbought, looking like we, we are due for a little bit of a pullback, especially in the global markets, uh, or the, the, the indexes, indices, etc. Uh, but with respect to that, um, inflation is coming down according to the numbers. I don't agree it is, but according to the numbers that uh, they're printing, or at least the rate of inflation is coming down. Inflation is not coming down. Let's correct that. Inflation is not coming down. The rate of inflation is coming down. Um, but now the unemployment rate is going up, which is really what the Fed is actually looking for. The problem is, is I think they're they're really on a double-edged sword, and they're very much so tiptoeing on one line to the next, as opposed to, is this going to be enough um, to prevent their, you know, hard landing, soft landing, no landing, which they just keep changing those tunes. Uh, I do believe a recession is coming. I believe a, a sizable recession is coming. And it's funny is that uh, the term that I hear now is just that this is the silent depression, the depression that most people are just not referring to. So uh, with all of that, let's take a look at the markets. All right, my friends, over here we do have Charles Schwab, Street Smart Edge. We've got the scanners over here on the left, and then these six charts, they are linked. We've got the two-minute, the 15-minute, the 30-minute, the 60-minute, or hourly, daily, and the weekly. Um, taking a look here, we have the S&P 500, the SPY, the ETF. Uh, the SPY, which is, uh, again, I've been trading this quite uh, quite a bit. Um, now, the interesting thing is this one, um, let's just start from the, the larger time frames. Um, I've had this line marked out for quite a while as this 454. Uh, we barely broke above it, came back down, and now we're making ourselves a little bit of a pop. The question is, is I think this thing's going to kind of dance around this 450, 448 area. And then the question is, is are we going to continue up or are we going to turn back down? On the long term time frames, you know, we've got ourselves the weekly here. This 50 is moving up. This 200 is moving up. As you can see, this little spike right here the rate of change between these two are going to get bigger and bigger as long as this keeps keeps uptrending, which means, uh, to me, I still see this as bullish opportunity. Short term, there may be some pullbacks, but uh, the last couple of days I talked, I thought that there was going to be a bigger pullback uh, was just how overbought this thing appears to me. Now, with respect to that, uh, we had ourselves a red day, popped right back up a red day again. This is based on that PPI data. Uh, which basically was just a big old gap and trap. So we kind of got, I think around 450, 450 or something like that in pre-market. And then this thing just sold off uh, basically in its entirety. So now the question is, is where is uh, the strength? To me, this is one of the most interesting parts of the market where there is no clear control. Who has control? Is it the bulls? Is it the bears? And I think that's a little more evident over here on the 30 minute, because as you can see, we have been just this big move up brought back down, riding this 8 SMA, and now we're just in this sideways channel. Now we do have this increased volume, which is just at the end of the day, uh, increased volume, and it looks like the buyers are stepping up a little bit. The question and the problem for me is the buyers stepping up is that we're so close to this 50 simple moving average, and it is starting to um, slow down its rate of uh, increase, but it's still a very, very bullish trend, uh, a little bit of a sideways action. Uh, I would say at this point, I think things are going to be kind of 50-50 as far as are they going to go up, are they going to go down. I don't necessarily like that. It's interesting, but it's I'm not a fan personally because at that point, um, you know, I want to have an edge. I want to have an edge of where I think it is going to go up or down. And so with respect to the SPY, unless we have some catastrophic move to the upside or the downside, um, it kind of has me questioning what's the best trade to be in. Um, and, and I don't mean that in a negative uh, scenario necessarily. And certainly maybe you may see something a little bit different than me. But for me, I want to have a little bit more of an edge or in a belief system that um, one side is going to be a little bit more uh, probable. So uh, we'll stand by on that one. TQ's very similar setup overall. If you look over here on the 
on the weekly here. Uh, we did make ourselves a push towards 47. I don't know if did we get over 48, 47, 14 was the high. Um, came back down, got back into the 45 range, 45.69, 45.50 seems to be that that difference of opinion here. Uh, we did get ourselves, I, I said before, I really thought we were going to get our push back down here, but at this point, I, I find that to be debunked. Um, I will say here that um, we did get ourselves a nice little uh, three-bar play to the downside on a weekly, so three-weekly, uh, pretty uh, red move as far as with respectively down from 47 to 35. Um, I traded some here, got rid of it, uh, unfortunately, towards the bottom, and then I picked up uh, quite uh, quite a few shares around the 37 range. I said before I liked the 37 area. Uh, I was not going to let this thing pass me up. I thought from this perspective, these candles did not exist. I thought we were going to get ourselves a further push. I really thought 28 was probable. Um, but as it showed that we had ourselves a little bit of a bounce opportunity, I, I captured in um, a couple thousand shares in the 37 range, uh, which was my desired entry point. Uh, I was, you know, of course, open for more. Uh, well within the profit at this point, but at that, uh, with going re with respect to that, it just depends. Uh, I've got myself some stops in place. Even I, I'll stop out at break even if this thing does uh, look like it's going to crash back down uh, through my entry. But at this point, I know this thing is getting really line heavy here, so it, maybe we'll look to peel some off. But no, I don't like it. We seem to have ourselves a little bit of a, a buying trend going right here. I'll leave it for now. But as you can see, like I said, if this thing comes back down in the 35, 36, 37 range, it's just there's some buying desire here, which I like, which provides me some uh, reasonable opportunity of support. Um, and I do believe that we do have some uh, good opportunity of, uh, of a bigger move. And, and I do think that we are going to have ourselves a bigger move to the upside. Uh, and of course, we do have to cross through this 44 area, uh, which I think is the 44 and then the 4550, which I talked about before. I think those are going to be the difficult ones to to break through. Now, with respect to that, let's uh, zoom out a little bit. Uh, you know, coming from the all time highs of 90, uh, this thing can really get moving both to the up or the downside. So previously, um, you know, we had ourselves a big kickback uh, back down from that 44 to the 29 area which was not too dissimilar to what we've had before. Uh, so this thing can certainly make some some pretty wicked down draws. But um, once this thing, if you see from over here, once this thing really crosses that 40 area with intent and more importantly, the 50, uh, 48, and that area just shows like we are really going to start to move. So I do think that, and I've said this before, I think we're going to have a difficult time breaking through the 40s. Uh, and, and through into the 50s, 48 to 50, 51, 52, I think is going to be a little bit challenged. But from 52 to uh, 60, I think it's going to go pretty pretty smooth as butter. And then we're going to pick up some more resistance in the, the low 70s to 80s area. Uh, that, of course, uh, you know, could be quite a while before that happens. Uh, I'm not, you know, anticipating that this is going to happen overnight or anything like that. I'm looking longer, longer, longer term trades for me. Uh, with respect, you know, if anybody's asking, you know, when do I think that we're going to come back and retouch all-time highs? Years. Years. I, I don't think this thing's going to turn around in the next year. Not unless they something breaks and they start printing money like COVID 2.0. Um, I just don't. I don't see it. I don't, you know, realistically, I don't, I don't see the movement. Uh, taking a look at Tesla. Tesla's been selling off a little hard um, in the last couple of days, just in this nice little downtrend, as you can see, basically in any, any time frame except for the larger time frames. Uh, the daily and the weekly are interesting because this thing is actually bullish, but we're getting to a point where the buyers are losing their steam, and it looks like the uh, bears might start to take over control. I see this thing going back down to 200 before it hits 300. That's just, uh, we're talking a 50-50 split at this point. Uh, looking at the way this thing is just, it rides that wave down, 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 down. Getting ourselves a little bit of a bounce. Whatever bounce it just received, it's losing. And uh, I certainly do see this thing. Now, do I see this thing coming all the way back down here in the next couple of days? Not necessarily. It really comes down to um, some larger economic trends. But uh, it does seem like the movement to the upside is going to be harder than it was before. Uh, but with respect to that and taking into consideration the SPY, uh, what we talked about before, the SPY and the TQs, the Qs really are, are going to make a larger push as to are we going to be pushing up or are we going to be pushing down in the, the days, weeks, and months ahead. Um, 
and um, I actually think we might head for a fake break, a fake break to the upside, and then it comes back down. Um, and then that kind of coincides with the uh, Nvidia trade as it is. Nvidia, this this bad boy wants to break 500. The crop, the problem is, is when this thing breaks 500. Uh, I think it was 502, but pre-market was in like the 580s. Um, I see this thing moving in the 500s. I can see this thing really making a nice big push uh, quite sizably into the 500s, 600s, 700s rather quickly. And for those who don't think that can necessarily happen, the last time this happened was way over here. This thing just kept moving and moving and moving. Uh, and then they did you know, some stock splits. And then so here they did a split. Uh, it was a four for one split and that thing just kept moving, 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 moving. Uh, so I definitely do want to emphasize that. Uh, and at the time, I think it was like a $2,000 or $3,000 uh, position uh, or eight, 800. I don't remember. It was higher. Been doing this for so long. I don't remember the prices anymore. Um, but with respect to NVIDIA, uh, this one's moving to the upside. Um AMD, AMD came down at 102s in the low 100s. I think it got down to 99.84 uh, the last couple of days ago. Uh, picked up some shares at the 102 mark, and I think I got rid of them around 104.80. Um, I thought that this thing was going to turn back around. Yeah, I think I got stopped out right over here um, a couple days ago. I uh, got stopped out, thought this thing, and then it ended up did going a little bit higher, um, and that's okay. Because uh, I said before, I don't like I like the 102 as a support zone. If it gets below that, I don't feel as much confidence as I did before, which is the case. And as it broke through 100, not once but twice, I felt less confident. And I thought, you know what, just take take the loss and get out. Uh, this thing is in a, a shorter term downtrend. So the question is, is even if this thing does want to break up, I, I see another upper wick, just just this nice upper wick candle kind of presenting itself. So not looking to go long, uh, not necessarily looking to go short, except on an intraday basis, uh, you know, as a day trade basis, I would uh, would have some interest going short with that respect. Over here, Dell, very interesting, gave earnings, nice big 23% move on the day. You can see here, uh, this I see is just a lot of um, market um, trajectory. Everybody's really excited to have some good earnings right now. I think the excitement we're seeing with good earnings right now is going to die out with respect to the next quarter. Uh, now over here on the, the shorter time frames, we are getting ourselves this nice little consolidation area. So. Uh, from this one, I definitely like it. A break of 70, go long. A break of 67, uh, we'll just say a little bit of confirmation here. Yeah, 67.40, uh, um, nice area to go short. But with respect to that, on 30 minute, that 8 SMA is coming up. It's coming short or it's coming up fast. So there could be a nice little opportunity here. Volume is uh, massive push in volume the last couple of days. The question is, is with respect to um, Tuesday morning, remember Monday the market is closed. With respect to Tuesday, is the is there going to be some continuation there or not? Amazon slowly slipping up, uh, slowly burning to the upside, and um, definitely have some interest with this one. Uh, I said before I thought it was too cheap down there. Picks them up on the longer term accounts, and uh, now this thing is really getting in this little sideways, um, you know, bull flag pattern going on over here where it's trying to consolidate between 144 and 134. Uh, again, we're going to have to break this downtrend to the upside, uh, get way above it, preferably above 155, 160, come back down, retest that 144, and then you'll feel some confidence that you've got yourself a uh, resistance line that is going to, you know, in my opinion, become a support. But uh, I think right now, and again, the short term, uh, watch out for the fake breaks to the upside. So if you want to play long, keep your stops tight, keep your profit, uh, keep grabbing those profit uh, if you want. If you're way within the profit, within the money, do what you want. Um, at that point, if you're way within the profit, I'd say 30 to 60% or more, start selling some calls against the position and just buy yourself some protection with some collars. Get some puts, sell some calls, and, and get yourself some uh, some collars to just provide you some uh, short-term protection whether out the storm insurance policy and then 
move on from there. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet here. I got a lot of stuff to do. I uh, hope everybody has a wonderful Liberty weekend and I'll catch you all in the next one.